Hi, this is Carl Irwin, and I just wanted to show you in physical form what can be done with this uh, Jack Transport Pull Request branch of MuseScore 4 uh, and, and show you physically how I use it so you can actually see the setup. Uh, this is not a very special setup. This is kind of typical for film scoring to have a, a couple of monitors, particularly one where you can show a picture, one where you can work off of your um, uh, scoring, whether you're using digital audio workstation or a notation as we're using in this case, sometimes both, which is something you can do with this pull request. You can actually compose in two different um, environments, one in MIDI mock-up or, and also at the same time in notation, and they will synchronize together uh, as you're composing, and then you can integrate those um, outputs uh, as you do post-processing. Um, I'll show you how I use this in a moment. Obviously, you don't need to have these screens. You can just use a window within window. Uh, do this as well from laptop. I've done a number of film score work uh, actually from my laptop uh, using MuseScore 4 and this uh, pull request uh, uh, branch. So. Um, I'm on Ubuntu Studio 24.04. It's the current long-term service distribution. And uh, there's a new distribution coming out this month in October. I, I don't upgrade until the next long-term service distribution because I want to make sure that things are stable. Uh, oftentimes with interim uh, releases, you'll find instability and a lot of experimentations going on at that time. So uh, that's what I'm using. Um, this comes with Pipewire uh, by default is the audio service and this is very good for us on Linux because uh, it does jack emulation. Rather than having to use jack uh, as a server, uh, I'm using Pipewire emulation and that's seam seamlessly integrated with uh, the Pulse Audio uh, emulation that's also on there and that's very, very easy to use now. Everything's plug and play. Uh, with Jack, uh, Jack applications uh, on these distributions with Pipewire now. You never really have to go in and change any Jack settings. The only thing you want to be aware of, of is what sample rate you're running in. Uh, and on this distribution with Pipewire, it's running by default at 48,000 sa uh, samples. So that is, uh, that's our sample rate. You want to make sure that MuseScore is set to that. The other applications generally will uh, pick up on whatever the sample rate is and dynamically they will uh, um, uh, convert to that. So uh, that's the only consideration. Question about before I show this is why should Linux have this capability when it's not ready for prime time on Windows and Mac? Windows and Mac doesn't have working jack, uh, at least not very well on those operating systems and certainly no integration with MuseScore in this build. Uh, so why should this go out to the master before either that capability is available or some other kind of synchronization? My answer to that is that Mac and Windows have an abundance of ability in terms of synchronization in, propri in proprietary software packages. Um, in fact, a lot of film score is done on Windows or Mac. You think it's on Mac mostly, but actually these days it's mostly Windows. Uh, often with Cubase. Cubase is the leading uh, digital audio workstation environment and it synchronizes itself to Dorico and then also has its own picture capability. Um, back in the day when Rewire was being used, it could be any number of applications, uh, Logic on Mac um, or Pro Tools. Um, in, in general, as I understand it, even still today, uh, most, if not all, work uh, all the workflow in motion pictures comes down to Pro Tools, even though uh, composers are using Cubase primarily or Logic in some, some circumstances. Uh, almost all of the output files end up in the final uh, compilation for audio in Pro Tools. That's kind of the industry standard. And Rewire was the way to uh, connect in that way. I believe Sibelius um, is now an Avid product. Uh, with Pro Tools, and I, I don't know if they're using Rewire, if they're using their own proprietary synchronization. But that's the deal. Like you, you can do this in proprietary software. Obviously, it costs some money, but it's it's available on Linux. This is the only option. Is is MuseScore? That's it. There is no other uh, notation option and synchronization option without Jack Transport. That is our way of doing it, uh, and uh, it has a long history in MuseScore. All the way up through MuseScore 3, you could have this capability. It was lost in the upgrade to MuseScore 4 through some community development. We're trying to bring it back in here, and I argue that it belongs in there because it's the only way for Linux musicians to do serious work 
uh, like this, as if you have it. And for that reason alone, I think it's worthwhile to get it into the master, uh, even if it's not available for uh, Windows and Mac at this time. Um, there are other options for you. So, um, and, and, and by the way, just to point out, uh, Windows and, and Mac, uh, uh, the Windows and Mac um, uh, platform for MuseScore 4 has some features that the Linux people do not have. Uh, so, in all fairness, uh, if we're going to be consistent about that, it seems that some uh, distribution platforms will have some advantages over others simply by virtue of what they are. And uh, that's the case here with the Linux one. Um, now, here's how it works. I have a couple of monitors here. This is a pretty typical setup if you're going to do film score. Uh, I've done this from one screen before. I've done this. I've done film score work from laptop. I still do even right now when I'm traveling around or if I don't have access to this particular rig. Um, but I run my picture on the uh, monitor up here. I run my uh, uh, notation or my uh, digital audio workstation from this monitor here. I generally will throw uh, uh, routing over here or notes, and I'll show you an application that I use for uh, filmmaker notes uh, on this side over here. Or I can extend and have a digital audio workstation open and MuseScore 4, and I've done that where I've had to do some hybrid stuff where I'm doing uh, Muse sounds also in, in uh, cooperation with uh, synthesizers, um, uh, Zen Ed sub effects, Zen Fusion, that kind of stuff that I'm running from the uh, digital audio workstation over on the other side. Uh, so up here, uh, I'm running, uh, in this case, I'm running Blender. So Blender is my, um, uh, my video platform. Blender, which is cross-platform, has jack sync capability. There you go. It's not necessarily running very well on Windows or Mac, even though Blender is a very robust project with a huge, massive team. Uh, Blender, uh, the 3D animation and uh, modeling suite and visual effects suite and video editing suite. I actually do my video editing out of Blender because it has its own video editor. It's very, very powerful. I'm using the video editor uh, from Blender as my picture uh, synchronization. Uh, what I do, and I've explained this on other videos, I create a frame offset. So this particular picture, this is an early animatic. Uh, so this is very, very early in development. I can't show you much of this uh, and let you hear much of it because this score is actually under lock uh, for uh, submission to festivals once it is finished. And the stipulation there is that I cannot release the film score uh, until a year after that date. Even though I have complete rights to the score, I, I can't release the score uh, to be heard until after that. So you hear a little bit of it here, um, and I think I'm safe to do that here on YouTube just for this uh, uh, demonstration. Uh, but this is very early animatic, uh, and we're just doing some very generic timings uh, and, and some theme writing, uh, and it's pretty well complete. It's a short animation. It's gonna be probably about five, six minutes long in total. Um, so Blender is running that up there. I can put this, um, I also have, because it's running on Blender in the video sequence editor, I have the audio from the uh, clip. So I can do reference of what the filmmaker has done with audio. That audio will play back here. And also, as soon as I'm done with my changes, I can export my audio, drop it directly into this Blender project and render out. Uh, quite seamlessly with everything open. So this is a session of multiple applications running at one time. Frame accurate, uh, frame accurate, particularly with this offset. 24 frames per second on the video. So what I do is I do a two second offset and I start at frame 48 uh, on here. The time code is burned in. So I have a, an actual reference of time code to the actual picture. And then what I do in a um, Muse score four, if I open that up over here, uh, at the very beginning, I'll jump back here to the very beginning. Uh, I have actually a um, an offset measure where the quarter note is quarter equals 123. This is slightly faster than uh, the two beats per second. Uh, so this does a little bit of a makeup in the two seconds of frames, 48 frames that I have in Blender. And what happens is, is when I get to frame 48 where picture starts, the beginning of this session, which is actually frame one, uh, this is where bar two begins, which is actually the beginning of the uh, musical sequence. Uh, whenever I render this out, I will delete bar one, render that out, and then that will sync perfectly to picture. And because it's a static offset, 
with the slight minor delay in, blend, in uh, MuseScore's play engine, uh, I'm perfectly in sync anywhere I click. I can start from Blender uh, at any frame that I want or any second, any spot in the timeline, or I can start from any measure inside of MuseScore 4 and they will be perfectly in sync uh, without any kind of delay. Okay, so that is how I deal with the offset. This may seem kind of hacky, but uh, uh, the truth of the matter is, is that film score composers work this way in digital audio workstation all the time. We often will nudge video in a digital audio workstation to get the offsets right and to put things in proper synchronization. So this is really old hat for, for film score composers to do things like this and deal with the uh, technology and some of its limitations. Now, over here on the right, the way I would work, uh, typically, as I just did some work on this a couple days ago, two nights ago, I did an update. Um, again, I can do my routing over on this side, so I'll come back to that in a moment. I'm running Pat Chance for my routing, so I can make sure that everything is routed to the proper place. Um, most of this stuff will uh, actually route automatically as soon as you open up the application. With this particular distribution, though, the uh, pull request, uh, there is a problem with the routing right now where you have to manually route it to the output, to the sound card. So uh, until this gets put into master, that probably will stay that way and you have to run those lines. Um, I also run, as I said, a, uh, I'll reconnect this over here, it timed out. I, I run um, my notes application over here. This is a, an application, an online application called SyncSketch. Uh, and if you do any kind of collaboration with anybody, it doesn't have to be in film score. It can be any other kind of collaboration uh, where you need to share images or video. Uh, you can have frame accurate notes uh, on Sync Sketch. It's completely free to use, uh, particularly if you're collaborating with someone. I, it's free for me to look at what the filmmaker has done. So the filmmaker has uh, written some notes over here with frame indications, uh, and I can play this back and watch and hear uh, what they have done in their uh, uh, project. And then I can address these notes according to frame in my project over here. So it's a nice way to work where I can kind of in real time on a third screen see uh, what the filmmaker wants and then I can uh, make those adjustments. So um, this will play, and, and this has actually has layers of projects. Um, on it. So as we do iterations, the iterations will stack up over time and we can go back and see previous iterations with notes. I can also write notes back. So in, in uh, real time, I can uh, uh, answer uh, any questions or I can address a note. And what I usually do is I work through this in checklist format where I will take uh, one element that the filmmaker has indicated, I'll address it, and then I'll say I uh, done and I'll, I'll strike it off. And if I, if I do something part way, I'll say, I did this much of it, but I left this other part until we get another animatic and see what the changes are going to be. So uh, that is um, a sync sketch, and I run that over here. Uh, just to show you, and I am recording the uh, Muse score screen, so I can bring that up uh, on picture uh, to look at. Just to see how this works, uh, if I go to the very beginning of this project, uh, it'll go back to frame zero, and this will also sync to frame zero. And if I hit play from Blender, it will play from MuseScore in time. And the music plays in with the uh, animatic as it is up here. Not only that, but I can uh, drop in at any measure that I want to. Let's say I go ahead, uh, way ahead, in the animation. And again, this is a fairly complete score at this point. Um, uh, I, I composed a relatively full suite of music ahead of this animation. That's what the filmmaker wanted because they're going to do some dance choreography with live actors and to do some match, uh, match animation, hand animation to that. So they wanted to have the music first. Uh, but what we're doing now is we're circling back around as the animation is being finished and we're making alterations to the music to better match uh, the animation because the animation is going to be different from what I initially created. Uh, the filmmaker will make a different decisions there. So uh, we'll jump way ahead here to a different spot. And um, yeah, I'll just pick a random measure and uh, zoom out so you can kind of see what's going on here. And now if I hit play from the transport and muse score, you can see it already selected a new frame from the uh, film. And uh, when I hit play, uh, it'll pick up. So, uh, 
So this is uh, not quite mock-up ready. I'm, I'm in composition mode right now. I am starting to put in some articulations and various things that will help with the mock-up. Because this is strings and piano, woodwinds, uh, some uh, Celeste and um, guitar, it's probably in some harp. Uh, probably not going to have to do a lot of uh, monkeying around with the notation. It's usually with uh, maybe some on the woodwinds for some of the breathing that needs to be done in there. But mostly for the brass is when I really have to mess around with articulations. And it's quite legato, so a lot of the default legato sound will be sufficient for this particular score. Um, but when I'm done writing, I will go back through and then I'll do my mock-up treatment on all of this. Something that we'll probably talk about in a subsequent video on the channel here. Um, I'll go through and I'll create my good mock-up. I'll render that out, bring it into an audio editor, and uh, master it uh, from there. If I need to add anything else, I can do that in Digital Audio Workstation as well. Speaking of Digital Audio Workstation, uh, I can also run in synchronization with uh, some uh, workstations. So this is Linux uh, Q-Tractor, and there's nothing in the session. I'm just showing you that there's a session open. And from here, I can hit play. And... You can see the transport is moving here, and I'm in synchronization with Q-Tractor, with Blender, and with MuseScore 4. Everything is in sync. Uh, not only that one, uh, but also uh, you can use our door. And this is actually my main workstation, the one that I use usually for uh, film uh, kinds of work. I like to use Q-Tractor when I'm, uh, and, I, and I'm using it less because of MuseScore. But when I was doing uh, mock-up with sample libraries, uh, ones that are available to Linux people, and we have quite a few uh, nice open source projects that are really, really powerful if you know how to use them, uh, I would use Qtractor for that because Qtractor for a long time was a little bit more stable with MIDI, um, uh, MIDI sequencing. Our door has caught up. Our door has caught up, so I've, I've, I've largely gone mostly to our door. But you can see here from our door, same thing. I can even go back to the beginning of the transport uh, from uh, our door. And then if I hit play, what will happen is it will jump immediately to the session start that's defined in Blender. So it doesn't matter what applica my application I start from, because my frame starts at frame 48 after my offset, and I would put the same offset in uh, my uh, digital audio workstation. I put one measure at 120 beats per minute against MuseScore's scores 123, and that does that uh, takes care of the static offset in the play engine. Uh, if I hit play, it will automatically jump to frame one on all applications and start playing from there. So you can see the jump uh, as it happens right there, and it works out quite nicely. Um, so that's it. You can see how powerful uh, this branch is, uh, and I, I really am looking forward to uh, a little bit more development on this to get it ready for prime time, getting it integrated into MuseScore 4, and, and hopefully it will be hopefully it will be kept up by the development team. I got to be honest, it doesn't look like the development team is very keen on Linux uh, right now. The, the, the focus really does seem to be on Windows and Mac, uh, not just for MuseScore 4, but really for all the great things that MuseScore 4 has brought, which is in the uh, Play Engine and in Muse Sounds and the Muse Hub. We don't have Muse Hub. We have this Muse Sounds Manager, which is behind. It's out of date. We don't have all the Muse Sounds that should be available to us right now that are freely available to uh, Windows and Mac users. And I'm not even talking about uh, the uh, proprietary libraries that have been ported. I don't expect to get those on Linux uh, because they're not available for Linux and other forms either. But I do, I do expect to see, I expect my Muse Sounds Manager to be as up to date as the Muse Hub at all times. I, I, I really do expect that. I don't see why I shouldn't, you know. Um, Linux is a major operating system. You know, it's, it's, it's running, it's what's running Chromebooks. It's, you know, it's behind the Android devices that are out there. And even just the, the desktop distributions and laptop distributions that are out now are very robust. And, uh, I've, I've been going on Linux as my only operating system, not only here, but also at work. Um, uh, they've allowed me to use that on all of my work uh, uh, machines as a music educator. I've been using only Linux for over 10 years now, at home even longer than that, but at work at least that long. You know, we, we, uh, Linux should be treated equally when it comes to the development on this project. 
uh, MuseScore 4. That's, I mean, that's how I feel about it. I, I really don't understand why it wouldn't be. Uh, but here we are. Things are lagging a bit. Um, and I hope, hopefully, hopefully there'll be a turn. Hopefully there'll be maybe some more people on the development team that are full-time that address Linux issues in the future. So anyway, that's my demonstration. Good luck with that and happy composing.